Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm Annette Young. One year ago, in a historic move, Ethiopia appointed its first ever woman president. Also, she is currently the sole female head of state in Africa. And I'm delighted to say that I'm joined here today by President Sahale Work Zaudi. Thank you so much for your time, President. Thank you to you. Thank you very much. You've had an extraordinary career as a diplomat. You've represented Ethiopia at the African Union. You've worked with the UN Secretary General. I'm just curious to know, however, do you call yourself a feminist, given the fact that you've worked so hard for equality? Let me say this. On feminism, and being a feminist, we have heard so much so much distortion, uh, different definitions. But let me start by saying, um, if being a feminist is being fighting for gender equality and women empowerment, if it is addressing the imbalance, if it is addressing the social justice, because I believe the women issue is a social justice, if it is accepting that women's issue is the m most cross-cutting issue than any other issues. If it is to say that we have to give them the voice that um, they should participate in changing the world, then we agree on that definition. This is what we should be doing. Uh, so this is how I see it. And uh, being the first female president here um, would uh, obviously um, lead you to work more for other women to have women to have um, the same opportunity. But your role is largely symbolic, however. Mm -hmm. But given that you are the first woman in the position, are you able to change the parameters of the job as a result? Well, uh, when you elect a woman, it comes with the territory. <laughs> Don't elect a woman. But if you have a woman, uh, then uh, you open the door for um, a better, um, you know, um, a, a, a better understanding, a better involvement on gender issues. So uh, from where I'm sitting, really, I, I think I can bring a lot. First of all, to make sure that people have understood the fact that today in Ethiopia, it's possible for women to achieve what others have achieved. It's all about role models, isn't it? It's a role model. It's about inspiring. It's about, uh, uh, you know, mentoring others. and they, truly believe in, in that. So it, it, it has created that momentum. Now, um, this, my coming here has been based on a political will. And we have seen the miracle of what a political will can lead you to. But uh, this has to be anchored into, um, you know, legislations and so on. And that has to be implemented. And you're talking there about the fact that this country has witnessed basically a political revolution, if you like, in the last 18 months with uh, a new prime minister, a dynamic young man who's saying that he's committed to gender parity. So as a result, what are the government's biggest challenges when it comes to equality? Well, um, the, the, the challenges are those you could encounter um, any time you want to address serious uh, social injustices. But uh, in any case, I think the main one is, as I said, to have the legal frameworks uh, in, in that regard to improve on those. But the government has made a big stride, uh, though, in, in creating those legal conditions that we have to go beyond. But most of all, you can have the best of the legislations, the best of the conventions. If it's not implemented, then uh, you would not reach uh, the, the, the point you want to reach. So I think it's very important to enforce those laws and to have a strict monitoring of... of is this. there the willpower to do that? There is, there is. I mean, um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, the Prime Minister has shown how um, he believes in gender equality and uh, that has to be now seen in deeds. And uh, the, I, I, I think there is a good understanding that uh, we should be moving that way. But of course, it's like any reforms, we have uh, 
resistance. And, and that's what I want to ask <laughs> you next, because whenever there's change, there's always pushback. What sort of pushback are you witnessing now in Ethiopia as a result? Well, in terms of uh, gender equality again, um, it's, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a resistance uh, to those changes. I think uh, we have reached a, a stage where people have understood that this is where we should be going. Now, between accepting and doing the, 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 the right thing at a, every level, um, there is a, a gap to fill. So this is where we should be concentrating. Personally, I think that we need to have more women, more women, educated women, more women in schools, primary, secondary, and then universities. We have a problem uh, at some level where we have a lot of dropouts, we have to maintain them. So there is no change in our society if the 50% of the of it is not educated. So education is, is very important. And there, you know, we have to have the right choices, um, which is not easy to bring, but we, we have that conversation. Um, I think a, a door has been opened, a door of big opportunity, and it's for us to really seize it. Some women activists here in uh, Ethiopia, however, are concerned that not enough is being done to boost female political representation at all levels. You've got elections coming up in May next year. Do you think that's something that can be changed between now and then? Well, uh, I think so. Um, and if they have said that, they're absolutely right. I mean, you can have women at any level of decision-making uh, positions and so on. But if you are not actively involved in politics, if you are not in political parties, if you are not elected, if you don't have that constituency as a support, uh, your empowerment will remain limited. This is a country very much affected by ethnic rivalries. Uh, in the last year or so, we've seen more than 1,200 people killed. We've seen more than a million people displaced as a result of clashes. Is there a danger that this could derail the government's reform agenda? Well, um, I would say it has to be addressed. Um, uh, I would not go to that conclusion, but it has really to be addressed. Uh, you know, in the past um, two or three decades, we have um, put the magnifying glass on our differences rather than on what unites us. And there is a lot that uh, would bring us together. So I think the first thing that we have really to address and uh, build on is to have a better national cohesion, uh, although we can have these uh, dissensions in other uh, countries as well. Uh, but uh, in, in our case, we have to really work on that so that um, we see that uh, the diversity is in fact um, an so, advantage. And, and celebrated. Advantage. And celebrated, yes. Is there, however, a risk of Islamist activities? You know, we've heard of reports of people recently being arrested. Is that a concern of the government? You know, um, I don't think that anybody can say I'm free from this kind of a risk. It's an issue that we, at the global level, should be addressed uh, seriously. So mine might not be out of that. Uh, but given the reality of, 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 of the situation, given uh, the geographical location of uh, where Ethiopia is, um, we have managed to, to really quell this problem. And I would say the reason for that is uh, the fact that Ethiopia has a long-standing tradition of accommodating many religions. And I say that because we have had all these religions before any other country, including in the West. And we have managed to live in peace. So when you start putting politics, in, with re mixing what should not be mixed, at the end of the day, it should, if it's not mixed, you'll see the separation. And this is what we have been doing throughout. And uh, this is what we would like to continue, to respect any other's belief but to also see that we can definitely live together as you, we used to be. 
So in that, if we do that, I think the danger will be very much reduced. Finally, I just want to ask you, what would you wish for a baby girl who's born today in Ethiopia? What would you want this country to look like by the time she reaches your age? Well, I saw statistics on the gender gap. Uh, it's not very encouraging for the part of the world where we are coming from. Uh, we need more than 60 years to reduce or to, re I mean, not to have a gap anymore. Um, it takes double the time for Sub-Saharan Africa. So there is a long way to go. And um, I'm not even sure if we will get there. But nevertheless, uh, we have to redouble our efforts. A young Ethiopian uh, girl um, growing up here should know by now that um, this is possible. That if she has a dream to reach somewhere, some, you know, uh, she can do it, obviously. She would, um, should understand that um, they, she will have obstacles along the way, but if we join hands, we can remove them. She should understand that those of us sitting where we are today should not be the tree hiding the forest, that we should be working for the rest of, the, of, of women as well. So an opportunity for a woman should be um, opportunities for others as well. And, and that's the key thing, isn't it? Quality benefits everybody. Yes, absolutely. President, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for yours. And that's it for the France 24 interview. Do stay with us because there'll be more news and headlines coming up very shortly.